Hello to everyone. So I think that you are supposed to dance today, but no, it will be not the dancing class. It will be the third session with Leonard, and he's going to tell us how to deal with them with emotion, how to connect better with each other, and how to be more social. So, um, Leonard, how do you feel today, this afternoon, Friday evening, almost evening? Almost evening, yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm feeling tired, actually. I don't know about everyone else. Okay, but you dance, you dance. <laughs> yeah, that helps relieve the stress. Huh? It's, uh, uh, you know, this is the, <laughs> another, another thing that we have, we have to get, we have to remember that dancing is very good for good energy. Absolutely, absolutely. It's a way of uh, keeping yourself uh, uh, in the flow, as they say. Keep the lymphatic system moving, keep the heart pumping, and uh, using music that you like, of course, that you enjoy listening to and dancing to that. It's also a very good a way of relieving stress. And uh, of course, sitting down in a sedentary position for a long time. So um, yeah, I mean, a few hours every day, right? So uh, it helps that a lot. Yeah. Then the, the next, the next session. I mean, the next program, which will be with dance. So we will, we will. Yeah, like, I like to do that as much as possible. Huh? To do okay. you know, the sessions were longer. Perhaps we would put a little bit of dancing in as well, just to relieve okay. stress. And uh... okay, thank you. So, um, dear colleagues, uh, I'm very happy to see you again to this afternoon. And uh, I don't have a lot to say because once we are seeing uh, Leonard, we are we 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 want him to to start to talk to us and to to share with us the, his great experience. And uh, today it will be, as I already said, an emotion. And uh, just so would like to clarify that it will be record. It is recorded, so you will be sent all the videos. But please give me some times because we need to work on that and we will send to you once the uh, old program will be put on, on, on YouTube. So have a nice and fun evening. Great. Welcome everyone. Give me a, a wave or a thumbs up or a, you know, show me some reaction here. Uh, great, super, great, Andrea, great, great, super, lovely. Turn your cameras on, turn your cameras on, please. It's hard enough having COVID and uh, having a situation whereby we, we know people are there, but we can't see them. In real life, if we were there face to face, we would see each other and we'll be able to connect with each other at a, at a, on a deeper level. Yeah? We would see each other, we'd see how our nonverbals are sort of responding. We'd be able to measure and give and receive information at a much, um, in a much easier way much better way and we can connect with people easier as well that wonderful super thank you so much thank you so much so today today is about emotions but more specifically about about gratitude yeah, yeah i'm not going to go so much into um our communication with people and what we can do and all the techniques we can use and from nonverbal communication to the desk technique to to uh, being assertive you know um it's the end of the week, and I thought I, about just just bending more towards something which has to do with um, our feeling of gratitude and our feeling of um, compassion for people in a way that we can practice it in a useful way that we can practice it and in a way that we can um, we can um, yeah perhaps feel better with ourselves as well. So. To be more precise, before we dive in, before we dive in, let's take let's have some takeaways, some shares that we had, some from feelings from the last session, some questions perhaps that you have about the last session or the previous session. Uh, you can just put that in the chat, and we'll just read through the chat and see what we what, what comes up here. Okay, so I just get that sort of sorted out here um, on the chat. Okay, so. The trick in seven steps. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. No problem, uh, Jana. Okay. Uh, the trick in seven steps. Okay. Look again. I'll do it one more time, but very quickly because we've got a lot to cover today and I don't want to um, uh, go over time. Yeah. So follow me. Follow me. Everyone follow me. Yeah. Will you follow me? Just give me a head nod or, or like this, whichever one you want. Okay. Or like this if you want to. One, 
Follow me. Follow me. Okay. <laughs> Two. Three. Four. Five. Now make sure the left thumb is over the right thumb. Five. Six. Seven. It was all about focus. Yesterday was all about focus and where we're paying attention and how we're focusing. And if I was to step out of myself and say, well, Leonard, where are you focusing? Are you focusing on the positive, the glass half full or the negative? Knowing that both exist, where do I choose to focus? And wherever I choose to focus, consciously or unconsciously, how does that give me energy? Does it give me energy or does it take energy away from me? That's what we did yesterday, right? In the end, it was about the lens that we look through. Is it a lens of lack, of, of limitation, of not enough, of, of, of scarcity? Or was it through a lens of abundance? Well, I have abundance, abundance is here. It's flowing in abundance and I can, whatever I choose to, adapt and be flexible. That was the idea behind yesterday. Okay, so I'm reading the chat now just to get back to on, on course to uh, what we talk about, um, 7K. Doesn't work for me. Ah, because you don't know the secret. <laughs> I'll tell you that next time. I'll, 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 I'll do that next time. I promise. I promise uh, on Monday I'll, I'll, I'll tell you the secret. And I'll tell you where to find it as well. Um, uh, yeah, love it, change it, or leave it. Okay. Um, was it live it? No, leave it. Love it. Leave it. Bye-bye. Or change it. Hmm? Either of those demand a lot of effort. Either one. Hmm? Perhaps it's easier to leave things, but the problem is you take yourself with you wherever you go. And so the problem normally comes up again in front of you. Um, any other things, any other things that you took away from, from the last two sessions? Is in a famous film. Okay. <laughs> I don't know the film, by the way, but okay. Any other things that you thought about that I oh, yeah, was interesting or um, like, that inspired me to actually look for myself and find something else that I really like doing as far as me my mental focus is concerned? Any other, uh, any other feelings? I must not be multitasking or when you're multitasking, just know when you're multitasking. Yeah, I know when I'm multitasking because I'm doing two things and maybe your stress level goes up when you're multitasking. Right? In any case, your brain can't multitask. It focuses on one thing at a time. We did this focus trick already, right? Take a step back and be aware of the situation, okay? Notion of empowering, yes. M, M is in, powering is the ability to act. We imp empower ourselves. Huh? Uh, find a book on Hans Erbeschbeke. Yeah, okay, very good. Uh, that's also good, very good. Because when he, when he talks about people um, not focusing on the task at hand, that's when they get distracted. Someone asks a question, takes our focus away. Someone comes in, okay, we're, 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 we're unfocused again. We get an email, we got a bleep here, you know, WhatsApp is happening. Uh, cultivate imagination. That's what we're going to do a little bit of on Monday. Cultivate our imagination it's with drive and with, with our motivation, how we put those things together. Huh? Our higher faculty. Positive lens, absolutely. Reminded me of the gratitude list. Write three things each night before going to sleep. Great habit. Okay, great. That's an interesting one. Cultivate imagination. Gratitude list, excellent. Anything else? Uh, color of your lenses, something you're acting. You know, musky, the trick is, you know, all right, then let me, let me continue then. Allow me to continue because this is quite interesting what we're going to do today. Today, we are practicing and experiencing how we manage our emotions, our emotions, and enhance our connection with other people, situations, and with ourselves. Other people, situations, and ourselves. How we enhance our connection, yeah? Empathy is, what is empathy? You can write that in the chat. What is empathy to you? Empathy is, what, what is the trick with the athletes? You have to, I'm gonna put my email in here. Perhaps that's gonna be easier for everyone. You can email me with questions if you wish. Empathy is open to others, putting yourself in others' shoes. Yes, feeling the other, feeling with, okay. A little bit more than feeling. So I have to leave, okay, too much work. Okay, Catherine, no worries. <laughs> <laughs> uh, being able to creep, uh, creep in another person's skin and understand them, yeah. Okay, when I feel the other, I understand. When you feel the other, you're understanding. Yeah, it's, in, you know, it's an assumption. Huh? We assume that we do. Huh? 
we're trying to take their point of view. We're moving on their side of the fence and looking from, from their direction. Uh, same as emotion. Sometimes the hand comes in, okay, okay. Understanding and being considerate, not to judge. Mm, we always judge, huh? <laughs> but okay, not to judge. Athlete strict doping, okay. <laughs> okay, good. To be in someone else's shoes is like empathizing, yeah? To understand from the other person's perspective. But to do that, we need to take off our shoes. And that's the tricky thing. Yeah. Okay. So what is compassion for you? Write that in the chat. How do we practice or demonstrate compassion in, from your opinion? No, not the textbook thing, you know, from, what is it in, in, from your point of view? To feel with the other, okay? To feel with the other. And how is it different from sympathy? Huh? Active listening. Okay, that's more like empathy, but okay, because you're, you're, you're dealing with them. Okay, but goes beyond, yes, indeed, it goes beyond empathy. Uh, to be empathetic with the other, okay, also, it includes empathy, but it goes beyond that. You suffer, you suffer with the other. Well, you are suffering, I guess, but I mean, it's the connotation, perhaps the denotation is that, but the connotation is um, a little bit trickier. Uh, listening, saying that we understand the pain. Listening and saying, uh, listen, concern. Well, look, my point of view is this. Compassion, with compassion, you don't need another person. You can see situation from a distance and have compassion. You can have the people, the situation in front of you and still have compassion. You don't need to enter into a dialogue with them to have compassion. So it's, it's everything, everything that you do with yourself. Huh? Compassion, yes, with suffering. Okay, we understand. Concern about the other. Yes, it's concern about what's happening outside of you, but everything is a projection, right? Another Tibetan saying, there's nothing going on out there. There's nothing going on out there. It's all coming from within, according to the Tibetans. And if you look into, um, um, someone help me out here. Um, that science, what is it called? Uh, I forgot, forgot the name, it's just totally, I'm lost. But okay, it's, it's, uh, it comes from, uh, I'll remember it as we go along, but it comes from this research in, uh, in this um, science that moves away from uh, um, that things are having an effect on us, but we're actually projecting. Yeah. Neuroscience, almost, almost, almost. Uh, but okay, I'll remember it when I get back to it. Okay, so we're going from that. We're going. We're we're trying to be actually a sacred witness. We're witnessing things, and uh, and we we are there present, but we're helpless. Yeah. Uh, we spoke about yesterday this uh, circle of um, control yeah? and how it's good to focus to refocus our focus on the on the area that we can control. What can we do? What can we focus on that gives us energy? Well, this is actually going outwards and it's, it's, it's moving towards, okay, well, I can't control the situation that's around me, my environment, but I can exercise compassion. I can exercise compassion. There's going to be one or two ways I can show you how to do that uh, as we move along here. Okay. So for those who were not here last time, create your comfort is not about being comfortable. It's all about cultivating personal, best personal practices on four levels, huh? to recognize and exercise our personal power to overcome obstacles and challenges and setbacks, regardless of what our present situation is or will be or was. Yeah? So I think that's important to remember, to recognize and exercise our personal power to overcome obstacles and challenges, regardless of what's happening around us, okay? The four levels are, Physical, mental, emotional, and on a spiritual level. And the spiritual level, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of bending it a little bit towards your spirit, focusing on your spirit, your imagination, your drive, and your motivation. Yeah? Uh, to recap, the first day physical was practicing tips and tricks and hacks, exercises that we can change our physiological and physical states while sitting down at the desk for eight hours or longer. Huh? Second day was of course mental. We talked about that, how we um, can guide our focus away from things that don't give us energy 
and focus on things that truly inspire us, that truly give us a tremendous amount of energy when we focus on them. Whatever, wherever focus goes, energy flows, and that thing grows, right? Just like when we're focusing on our examinations and we're focusing on it, and then we understand things you know, as, as time goes on and we're better at it. We can articulate ourselves within that, that uh, theory or that subject, you know, subject matter. Underlining the foundation of all of these sessions is the idea that as we journey through our lives, we are responsible for our bodies, we're responsible for our minds, and we're responsible for our emotions and our self-worth. We are responsible for our bodies, our minds, our emotions, and our self-worth, our self-image. We make decisions and we have behaviors that direct us in a certain direction and give us certain results. So whatever my results are, I can easily evaluate them and say, well, you know, how am I doing here? And if they're more negative than positive, it's up to me. It's my responsibility to go back and look at what am I practicing? What am I not only practicing in what I do and how I behave? What am I thinking? How am I feeling? And how can I tweak this? How can I uh, download the best sort of Leonard to come down and, and operate on a different level? Because he's operating from different values. Yeah, less from limitation, more from abundance, for example. So we're asking ourselves, how well is this working? I'm going to take away this chat thing here. How well is this working? What physicality, thoughts or feelings really serve me? What things, where, where, where is my emotional residence? What, are my, what is my knee-jerk emotional reaction? Is it fear? Is it frustration? Is it, is it, is it, um, whatever, is it, is it sadness? Um, so do they, do they, does it serve me really? Does it truly serve me? Does it truly serve my development? Does it serve my expansion? Does it serve my fulfillment? Yeah. I think this is a good question to ask oneself every now and then, <laughs> like once a week, perhaps. Um, <laughs> what do I need? Another question. What do I need? And what? What don't I need anymore? What do I no longer need? And how do I say, say goodbye to that? How do I you know, let that go? Yeah. Um, in individual consultations, I would always sort of, I would often tell people, you know, the things that we don't, that don't serve us any longer, we have to sort of say a prayer. We're thankful for them. Thank you so much. You know, it's great being with you. Okay, thank you. I no longer need you. I got to love you and leave you. Huh? But to those ideas that we have, to those notions or those feelings that we have that don't serve us really, they don't, they don't make us feel um, epanoui, huh? to expanded, fulfilled, you know, where, where, where this uh, condor flying, yeah? doesn't make us feel this way. We're settling for other things, okay? We're also asking ourselves, you know, what do I truly value? What do I truly value? If I, if I would close my eyes and I had Harry Potter's wand and I would click the wand and I can get my desired state of being hmm, where, where I would have what I truly value and desire and bring it into my life today and for the future, what would it be? Well, that's another good question. What would it be for you? Let's write that in the chat. I haven't looked at the chat for a while. Okay, <laughs> that's part of it. Good. Anything else? What would it be for you? What do you truly value and desire? But truly. Huh? So if you can think of three things, it'll be the third thing that perhaps <laughs> is the most important. Huh? Normally we go for freedom. Okay, yeah, okay. Miriam, at Miriam, okay. <laughs> Being with my family laughing and dancing. Harmony, confidence, huh? okay. What else would really inspire you? Family, friends have a life that keeps me away from fearing death. Ah, when we move away from fear, it meets us on the other side. We have to deal with it. We have to embrace fear. Just like we have to embrace um, anxiety to feel confidence. Huh? This confidence and, 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 and being courageous is not without fear. Fear is there. 
but we know how to manage it. Huh? Recognition, yeah, liberty, yeah, serenity, creativity, happiness, of course. To be conscious or more conscious, Susan, you know, you are conscious already. Peace of mind, okay. Peace of mind comes with, you know, there's a saying uh, by some uh, very uh, ominous uh, Indian uh, spiritual leader. He says, uh, true love is not for the faint or for the weak hearted. It is built of strength and understanding. Yeah? True love is built of strength and understanding. So it embraces everything. Whatever happens, you're there. And you have this, this anchor inside of you. Yeah, it's a GPS system. It's right here. And you're connecting it. Yeah? Not running all the, uh, after all, time after time. Okay, not running after the time after. Okay, time is something that we're all, we're all bound to because we live in a physical body. And so we're, we're bound by time. And uh, yeah, that's another course. <laughs> <laughs> how to use one's time efficiently. But it has to do with focus as well. Where are you focusing? Are you focusing on the most important things that give you value and, and fulfill your desires over time? You know, or are you focusing on the quick fix, on the quick uh, gratitude? Let me just give myself uh, one of those uh, Snickers or you know, chocolate cakes. I'm speaking about myself, of course. Okay, so those are the questions, right? So we could ask ourselves, Today is all about our emotional relationship with things, others, and ourselves. And I want to know if you're ready to do this, if you're ready to start the process. So can I have a head nod as a, as a commitment? Come on, come on, let's make it big. Yes. <laughs> okay, first thing you need to do, first exercise is to get some water. I have mine here, if you don't have it already. Second exercise is to have some tissues beside you. Yeah, believe it or not, you wanna be prepared for this. Not that everyone is gonna, you know, feel their emotions, but hey, you know, if it's beside you, then <laughs> it's, good to, it's good to have a tissue or two, yeah? All right then, good, wonderful. <laughs> Thank you, Miriam. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Okay, so, here we go. So let's uh, stand up, shake the body out. Shake it up, 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 shake it up. Shoulders, hips, bend the knees. And just like, as if you're gonna start jogging, you know, just preparing. I'm just gonna get myself warmed up here, get the motor running a little bit, okay? All right then. So as we did yesterday and the day before, we're gonna start with the condor. Here we go, up, 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 up. And then you can look up to the sky, the blue sky. Even if you just see ceiling, doesn't matter. Imagine, yes, wonderful. This is beautiful. This is lovely. Yes, with the breath as well, wonderful. Inhale, oh, and the sky is blue, wow. One last time and rise up with this. Okay. Okay, one more time with the eyes closed. And imagine that you're flying several thousand meters above a warm, beautiful, lush countryside. Yeah? Okay, one more time with the arms. Open the armpits, lift those wings, spread those wings. Right. Okay, great, and relax, ah, good. One question for you, as the condor, as the big bird with a three meter wingspan flying over the countryside in a beautiful, on a beautiful summer's day, clear blue sky, where was your destination? Where were you going? Interesting question, no? Where are you going? This is for a Monday. This is a teaser for tomorrow, or for, for Monday rather. Where are you going? Nowhere. Ah, okay. And how does that feel? Follow the sun. Just enjoying the view on holidays. What does that mean? But where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you flying to? Flying to above the oceans. Island of Romo. Okay, Maldives. Okay. Strange, I had a Cornwall in my mouth. Wonderful. To infinity. Okay, that's a destination. Whatever destination, I, I follow it. Okay. 
Okay, so that we talk about focus here, right? We're focusing on something. So we have to make something real, we have to have a destination. Before you take a, a plane, do you know where you're going? Before the plane starts its engine, do you think the pilots know where they're going? So why not us as well? Before a ship leaves the port, do you think it knows where it's going? Yeah, it has a destination. And by the way, we only see the destination, perhaps the last 5% of the journey. We don't see it before. It's all here. It's all in the mind. We create it in our minds. We have pictures in our head. We, we search it on, on, but that's not real. That's just the computer screen we're looking at. And images that we are deciphering and giving meaning to and giving feelings to and having a feeling of, wow, this is great for us. Just like if you were to have a photo of someone that you, that you appreciate enormously on your desk as you're working or studying. Huh? It's all in the mind. It's all in the mind. I'm just looking at the chat here. Can't travel by, uh, can't travel by now. <laughs> to Mars, why not Mars? Huh? But Mars is, has to be known. The other question is, where are you traveling to? Does that give you a feeling? Does that give you a good feeling? Huh? You don't like to plan because you risk disappointment. Ooh, that's, that's almost like saying, um, I don't like to love because you always end up in the heartbreak, you know. Um, I would say, like, I don't like to swim because uh, I always get water in my mouth. Uh, the only way to learn how to swim is to get in the water and do it. And I would say the only way to live life is to live it. To live it, experience it, and learn from it. I mentioned, I showed you the, the, um, the, uh, the picture of um, the quote by um, Alvin Toffler. Uh, it's not about reading or writing. It's about learning, unlearning, and relearning. And we have this capacity. Some people say that, you know, our learning begins after we leave university or, or school. Right? Our learning begins then, and we should continue learning. Right? And this is when we talk about neuroplasticity, we talk about this as well, how we can relearn things and re-understand things and imagine things greater than they are. Yeah? Uh, they believe they know where they are, they believe they know where they are going. <laughs> All right, so here we go. To believe it is one thing, to visualize it and to describe it to yourself. Okay, we'll do that on Monday is another thing. Let us move on. So um, another exercise. You can be sitting down now. Okay, now we've done the condor, we're there. Just leading the chat, shared on the quote by Facebook, put some more position in terms of unlearn. Okay, well, you know, there's always, there's always, uh, you know, perhaps, uh, I don't know, we'll talk about that later. But okay, here's the next exercise. Put one arm here like this. Everybody, one arm on, the sh one hand on the shoulder. If, if you've got one of those flexible shoulders, you can do it further. One hand under here like that. Ugh. And just stay like that for 20 seconds. Oh, okay. Some people are counting. That's okay. That's good. I did say 20 seconds. I am just relaxed. Ah, oh, relax, relax, relax. Chat in. How, that, how was that for you? How did that feel? What were you thinking? Be honest. How did it feel? What were you thinking? Be honest. Warm. Good. I've seen where I want to go. Fabulous. I like a hug. Like a hug. It felt like a hug. Okay, a hug. Uh, like being hugged. Hugging yourself. I didn't feel anything. Okay, thank you for being honest. A hug. Sometimes stretches. Okay, a bit, of, a bit oppressing. Ah, this information is from you, to you, about you, and for you. Sweet, relaxing. 20 seconds. Such a long time. Huh? Yeah, maybe. It was, it was Leonard's 20 seconds, huh? Um, okay, fair enough. That's what it is. Now let's do the exercise again, shall we? One hand on the shoulder. Other hand like this. And now we're going to close our eyes and breathe. 
deep breaths or whatever, the breath that you have, just breathe and just focus on the feeling. Focus on the feeling. Mm, it can be a belly breath as well. So your belly expands as you um, breathe in. And if you want, you can sort of like uh, have your head resting on the side if you wish, if you wish. Just there, Ugh. eyes closed. I can't see anyone, so I can't really control. <laughs> Just feel it. Just feel the feelings. Feel those feelings. Okay. Feel those feelings. Okay. And gently relax the arms and chat in how that was for you. What were you feeling at that time? Oh, some people don't want to let go. Okay. For me, short, intimate, relaxed, coming back home, sad, pressing and relaxed. Another hug, please. Okay, great, warm, safe. Huh? You know your body doesn't know the difference between what's real and unreal. Your body, your system doesn't know the difference between what's real and unreal, right? You agree with me? Rooted, stable, safe, protection. Write in if you agree with me or not. Felt bigger than I wanted, okay? Do you agree with me with that uh, love? Yes or no? A Y or an, or an N? It's okay. You shouldn't always agree with me, not at all. I'm not sure I get it. Your body does not know the difference between what's a reality and what is not a reality. Your body, your physical body, your system. It doesn't know the difference. Okay, it just feels. When you go to the cinema, what happens? Or when you used to go to the cinema, what happens? You watch a film and it's a really like moving film. You know? Either one of those films where you feel like, oh my God, yeah, get him, get that person, get them back, you know, save, save the people, they're so good. What are you feeling? What's happening with your system? Oh, you have cortisol and adrenaline running through it. Or you're crying. Or you feel moved. You're feeling sad. Your body is feeling these feelings. But what are you really looking at? You're looking at a screen. You're looking at a screen. We're part of the movie. What makes us part of the movie? Hmm? Our emotions. Our emotions. What we see, how we interpret the information, and how that makes us feel. Yeah? But all we're looking at is a screen. Yes, factually. It's a fact. We look at a screen with images projected on it, with music and sound, but we feel something. We're looking at a story, a narrative, and we have narratives ourselves. And when we feel something, when we empathize with someone or sympathize with someone, when we have compassion for people, we feel something. We feel something inside of ourselves. And that feeling builds up in us Either we do something about it or we feel it and, and we feel helpless or we feel that we have to do something. We feel angry. We want to make a change. We want to change those people's lives in some shape or form. Yes or no? The Pavlov thing is seeing the lemon. It's tasting a lemon. You know, if I say to you, we can do another exercise, but we don't have time. Um, okay, let's see how far we can get. Yeah, so this is the way our, our system works. We are creatures of, of comfort, but also creatures of, of sensing, of a sensing and feeling affinity with other people and other creatures and other things around us, okay? So that's, that's interesting. Now, we're gonna do the hug one more time. We're gonna do the hug one more time. One more time, please. Okay, but it can be the other hand. If you wanna change hands, it's fine. It doesn't really matter, the other hand here. So the body doesn't know the difference. You're giving yourself a hug, giving yourself a hug. Close your eyes, breathe deeply, another 20 seconds, yeah? real deep, real relaxed. And imagine that someone you love is giving you this hug. Someone who holds, who supports you, who loves you, and you love them is giving you this hug. Just be there.
Very good. And just gently, when you're ready, you can slowly release the embrace and allow that to, to linger. And write in the chat now how you felt. Yes, but the hugs are not fake. The hugs are real. The hugs are really real. Much more intense emotions, reassured, protected. What it was my father who died 20 years ago and I cry. Super relaxed. By changing a little bit the positions of my arms, I felt the hug, okay? So comfort, okay. Realize this. When we put intention in what we're doing, people feel it. And so do we. So do we. And if it's something like a hug or a handshake or whatever, look in the eyes with presence, with, with intention, with an openness to share. Oh, we impact people's lives. That's how we influence what we can't control. That's how we can do it much nicer before than, than before, warmer, comfort. Okay, great. So this is called the hug. It, you know, the, if you look up Virginia Satir, she was an American, uh, she wasn't, she's deceased of course, an American psych psychotherapist and author and had a significant influence on the founders of the neuro-linguistic programming uh, world. Huh? Um, and she said, we need four hugs a day for survival eight hugs a day for maintenance and 12 hugs a day for, for thriving or for um, 12 hugs a day for growth, for growth. We need 12 hugs a day in 24 hours. It's like one every two hours for growth. Imagine, just imagine that. Our kinesthetic sense cannot be ignored. The sense of touch. And so my questions to you are this. Okay, you are these, these questions. How much kinesthetic connection do you receive on a daily basis? How much kinesthetic connection, and it can be you with you in the shower, for example, or you with someone else, how much? Just write, write it down for yourself. You don't need to chat it in. Just write it down. I receive this amount of kinesthetic connection. When I say kine kinesthetic connection, I mean conscious sort of kinesthetic connection. You're aware of it. Huh? Okay, second question. How much kinesthetic connection do you give on a daily basis? <laughs> How much kinesthetic connection do I give? Me? Give? Well, it's part of contribution. We'll go into that hopefully on Monday uh, with our human needs. Huh? Not really during the pandemic. Yeah, okay. That's the outside situation influencing us. Okay. So the other question would be, okay, how do I begin to build this now? Hmm? Does it, yes, of course it does count with pets. Of course. Of course. With things, animals, people, and ourselves. Counts with everything. Uh, one a lot, two not so uh, uh, so happy that my family is with. Okay, great, good for you. There's a difference between giving and taking, of course. If I receive a hug, I also give a hug. Not necessarily, not necessarily. And so the third question is this. I mean, the third question is this one. What is the quality of that connection, of that kinesthetic connection? Is it full of presence? Is there love? Is there is there a certain openness? Okay, I give a hundred to my reluctant children. Oh, <laughs> okay, what was that? Okay, I won't go into that, but that's a little bit maybe, you know, when I say presence, of course, when you, when you, when you, you know, I had a girlfriend uh, a long time ago and um, it's one of my first girlfriends years ago. And she gave me a book called The Book of Hugs. And I will never forget it uh, because it's like, you know, to be a hug therapist, you need to be able to give and receive and to know when to give. And to know what kind of hugs to give, you know, with a hug like this, the one like that, or a big one. Okay, kinesthetic gardening, difficult. 
Okay, kinesthetic guarding, putting your hands in the earth, it's very good. Difficult questioning, okay. A difficult question, okay. Well, then think about it. Take the question and think about it. You know, meditate on it, for example. It's one way of doing it. So, okay. I want to uh, talk about a situation very quickly. I can see time is spinning. Let's, I'm gonna finish 10 minutes later, okay, for this session, because there's a lot of information. I'll just go through this last exercise and a send off, but it's important, it comes with a story. I was, um, uh, when I stopped dancing in roughly 2007, 2008, I started immediately studying kinesiology. And um, at that time, uh, there was a lot of talk about, you know, the ethics of kinesiology, which are very clear and precise. And also, um, how do we help people that don't want to be helped? And how do we help ourselves? And so one of the many answers that came up from, from the teachers and professors there, they were talking about um, Ho'oponopono. Who's heard of Ho'oponopono? Raise your hand. Yeah. Okay. Who practices it? Okay. Good for you. Yeah. Ho'oponopono. So Ho'oponopono is um, basically a Hawaiian spiritual healing technique. And um, okay, so I was, uh, uh, I had a Brompton bike and I pride myself in being one of the first people to have a Brompton bike in Brussels, way back when, I think in maybe 2005 or six. And um, there weren't many there, people were looking at the bike like, oh my God, this is a strange looking, is it a kid's bike or something? It folds up very neatly. Anyway, I'm riding this Brompton bike and I like riding very quickly. And I put 12 gears on the bike. I really custom made it so I really can just speed ahead. And I was even, you know, surpassing other bikes, you know, cyclists. Um, and I was always in a rush and I was always pushing myself to cycle harder because it was good for my physicality and my musculature. And, you know, I wanted to stay fit all the time. And I was getting into a lot of difficulties on the road. People were opening their doors uh, <laughs> when I'm cycling down the road, you know how the bicycle lanes are made out in Brussels. It's kind of it's sort of difficult, it's sort of dangerous actually. Um, but I didn't care, you know, I was like, uh, and I got into arguments with people, like I, I, I put my bicycle wheels into the tram line, I fell over, I broke my tooth, uh, lots of difficulties and challenges. Um, but I love the freedom uh, of riding the bicycle and having the wind in your face. So I was challenged, I was challenged with these two dilemmas. And um, I started saying to my, you know, repeating this, these two, these four phrases. Um, I love you, please forgive me. I'm oh, sorry, I've got to get right again. <laughs> uh, um, I love you, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you. Is that right, Jamila? I love you, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you. And so as I'm riding my bike, I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. know, it had a sort of rhythm going to it. My day was fantastic. People would sort of walk out in front of the road and say, oh, sorry, I'm sorry. Friend, all these kinds of things that happened to me. And so um, the essence, from what I understand, the essence of Ho'oponopono is that whatever you feel inside of yourself, say for example, you're angry with someone or situation or a difficulty that you're facing at that time. That feeling that you have, you say the Ho'oponopono to that feeling inside of you. You say to that feeling, okay, for me it was anger. I love you, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you. It has nothing to do with what's happening outside of you. It's not about Ho'oponopono, let's see if I can uh, look at my notes now. <laughs> notes. Okay, it's gonna be easier like this. Okay, here we go. Um, Ho'oponopono, I'll write it in for everyone. Ho'oponopono, yeah? Dr. Hugh Len. Dr. Hugh Len is the Hawaiian guy. But, uh, very interesting guy as well, and, uh, and what he was able to do with this, okay? So this is compassion. For me, this is compassion. Regardless of if the person's there, if I can connect with them or not, I'm working on myself. I'm working on my projection of my feelings which are in disaccord with the outside environment in which I'm living and experiencing. 
my beliefs, my values are in disaccord with the values and beliefs of that situation at that time while well, I work on myself. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive. Thank you. Actually, sorry, actually, I'm sorry is the first one. Is the fifth one? Not the first one. I'm sorry. Okay. Forgive okay. me. I love you and thank you. Okay, good. Sorry, this is, okay. I like this version. I like this version. I'm sorry. I love you. Okay, I heard differently from, from what I uh, was at that time listening to Dr. Hulen on, uh, maybe I got okay. it wrong. Maybe, oh, but reminisce. May, maybe there are more versions, but, but basically the phrases are there, no? So, okay, yeah. Yeah, 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 phrases are there. And, and then you, you know, you're working on yourself, you're working on what's happening within you and you're speaking to that. Just like uh, on Monday, we'll be speaking to ourselves again. No? They used to say in England that speaking to yourself is the first sign of madness. But I believe that speaking to yourself now is the first sign of intelligence, the first sign of that, you know, we are conscious, or we, are, we are aware of what's happening and we get to speak to ourselves and, and, and tell ourselves things. We do it anyway, whether it's conscious or unconscious, we speak to ourselves. It's called the internal reference, frame of reference in, in certain psychology, psychological systems. Huh? So um, the troll talk huh, is another appellation for that. Huh? What we tell ourselves that uh, doesn't help us, doesn't inspire us. Huh? We know that whatever communication or co connection we have with other people is a reflection of what's happening on inside, ourselves with ourselves. Mm -hmm. Anyway, this is a very, very interesting um, um, method of overcoming difficulties or being in situations where you have no control, you're feeling helpless or hopeless for that matter. And you're able to, yes, Luc Baudin. It's very interesting, that book, too. I have it back behind me. Um, and you can um, you can work on yourself in those moments. It's an opportunity rather than um, a liability. Oh my God, it's a, but it means it demands that you change your state. It demands that you're willing to do something about what's happening. Okay, that's the precursor. That's the um, that's the precondition that you need to have. Oh, pono pono. Thank you, Philippe. Wonderful. There we go. Super. Okay, so ch write in the chat how that works for you, what you think about that, you know, your, your feelings, your comments. Is, you know, is it, is, it, is it really true? Or, you know, tell me what your thoughts are, what's going on in your mind? That's a good question. <laughs> You'll fight with biking. When, if you, if you like, you know, if, you know, everyone, you know, there's, there's all kinds of ways of practicing gratitude, uh, you know, and every different way appeals to different people. Okay. Okay, great, wonderful. For 15 days, ah, oh, there's a real result. There is a real result because you're working on something that, that is, is, is yours. You're working on something that is yours, your emotions, your thoughts your feelings, your physical ability, you know, everything, everything. Sometimes results are immediate, depends on the incubation time, huh? how, how hard, how, how hardwired those feelings and thoughts are. Uh, yes, excellent res regulation, like a thermostat for a system which is overheating, yeah? It's like a fading, it's like faking a smile, you start to feel better. You know what? Faking, I don't believe in faking. I mean, yeah, imitating or yeah, okay, faking a smile. Just imagine that you're faking a smile. What happens when you smile? These 43 muscles that are in your face. Well, your body starts believing you. If you keep it up, if you practice it, and then when you smile, you go outside, people are smiling back to you. Yeah, And then you start feeling these feelings. The smile is connected to our ventral vagus um, nerve. And the ve ventral vagus nerve helps us feel safe and secure. Science is proving this, huh? So, um, polyvagal theory, I think. Check it out. Um, okay, so um, this is very interesting. I thought that would be uh, uh, interesting for you. I see that we still have time. So, um, we're not going to go into a breakout room today, um, but I'll leave you with one last uh, compassion exercise that you may want to practice. It's a little bit different from uh, Ho'oponopono. Um, but I think it works very well for certain types of whatever profiles of people. Any book reference for Ho'oponopono? I have it 
here. I have it here. I have it here somewhere. Uh, if I can find it very quickly, I'll, 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 I'll you can see it. Uh, I can't find it. I can't find it. I can't find it. I can find it. I can find it. I can find it. Here. See? Maybe Philip can write in the chat. Philip. Zero limits. Ah. Okay, okay, we'll write, write to complete uh, because there is another name for the author, but it's a very long name. So Yes, it's a very long name. But here, just take a snapshot of this. Okay. Done. Oh, bottom, bottom. There's another one I have as well. Here we go. Ça, c'est en français. Oh, bottom, bottom. Huh? Toutes les deux, c'est bien. Both of them are good. I mean, um, what's his name? The uh, doctor. Um, they're both doctors. Vitali is also very good. I mean, he's a good guy. Okay, so another exercise. And this I got, I heard from recently. I, I always check in with good friends of mine and we have long talks. And um, here's, what I, uh, here's what he told me. There's a heart for happiness. It's called Heart for Happiness. And uh, it's a great happiness. The Great Happiness Project is the project. I don't know. It's some Dutch, um, uh, really interesting Dutch people who started this. And uh, I'm going to just say it to you. I think this is really interesting, okay? Set your attention on someone or an internal monologue, monologue that you have, a negative monologue set, you know, on a situation, a difficulty, a challenge that you're facing and say the following, just like me, this person is looking just like me this person is searching for happiness in their life. Just like me, this person is trying to avoid suffering in their life. Just like me, this person has experience, has experience with sadness, loneliness, and despair. Just like me, this person is trying to fulfill their needs. Just like me, this person is learning about life. I find this very powerful. It's how you can practice compassion, practice getting in tune with your emotions and, and, and relaxing them and sort of allowing them to, to have their space, but be less charged. It's a way of changing your vibration. You know, we're all, we're all sensing feeling beings. Everything is vibration scientifically, right? Everything is vibration, not just wavelengths, you know, colors as well. Things are vibration. The molecules are vibrating at a certain frequency. That's what makes them those types of molecules. Huh? And so when we break things down into vibration, just like, uh, you know, gamma rays can, you know, eventually, you know, destroy cells in the body, chemotherapy, for example, you know, um, it sets a new vibration. It sets you in a different state. It sets you in a state where you're open, you can be open and you can be at peace, right? Whatever happens outside of you. I can see that we're finishing on time, that's wonderful. Normally I would have, I would perhaps do an exercise or two with you so you can do it together and share some experiences with each other. Um, let me just check, see the exact time here. Okay, so two minutes. So the last two minutes before we wrap up, I'd like to um, invite you to write in the chat any hacks of kindness that you've been practicing or that you would like to practice or that you've heard of or that you've seen other people practicing. What kind of hacks of kindness or gratitude it can be or empathy it can be too. I'm sorry, I don't know the names. I don't know that I haven't looked into it enough to, but I thought I would share that with you because I thought it's very powerful. Listening. Absolutely, Victoria, listening. What other hacks of kindness can there be? Writing a thank you letter by hand. Okay giving credit to others, financial credit, no, I'm kidding. Proposing help, no? what else can you do? 
Accepting help, perhaps, is also another one. Offering help when possible, listening, okay. What other hacks? If you were to hack your brain now and to find the hacks of kindness you can think of, use our collective intelligence here to give each other some, you know, you can save the chat as it comes in, recognize the efforts of others, show interest, open yourself to others, smile, yeah, absolutely smile, it doesn't cost a thing. Smiling, smiling to yourself even. Between a, a bad thought and a smile, what do you think the body would choose? Choose a smile. Caring. The body will always choose the best possibility available to it that it knows of. Mm -hmm. Caring. Show without wanting to get something back. Absolutely. Unconditionally hugging, smile, change your perspective, put yourself into other person's shoes. Okay. Nice surprise. Say thank you, oh, say thank you, be present. Anything else, other hacks? If you were to, um, um, for example, advise someone else, a dear friend of yours or a family member, look, I wanna tell you, there's a hack of kindness. Job, can you hear them? <laughs> Sorry? Ich... <laughs> yes. Yeah, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, okay. Yeah, you can put it in the chat. Um, what other hacks? Let's be creative here. Let's let's look let's look outside of the box. What other hacks can we do? Okay, no problem, uh, Camila. Good night. <laughs> okay. What other hacks? What other hacks could you see other people practicing that you think, oh, I don't know much about that, but that's another hack. Let me just give that to Leonard. Pick up rubbish. Combine jogging and saving, saving certain endangered animals. Okay, yeah. Well, come on, we have, we, there's, there's uh, 87 of us in the room. Pray, absolutely. Brain. Whether it's, you know, medit you want to call it meditation or mindfulness, is I saw the same thing. One is has a connotation with religion, of course. The other is just, you know, oh, non-religious. But we do the same thing. We focus, we relax, we send good thoughts. You know, if you, if you, if you do it at that level, you know, but you can influence your subconscious mind. You know? I'm looking at the chat. Care for people around us. Thank you, bye-bye. Thank you for little things in life. Absolutely, the small things in life, huh? The flowers growing, you know, helping the cyclist with a breakdown, a flat tire. See and accept me as you, as, and you, as we are. Yes, exactly. During COVID times, quite a few private teachers are left without pay. Okay, continue paying them. If you do not lose your job yourself. Okay, why not, Petra? Why not? Give support by listening. Showing empathy. Clap your, clap your own shoulder. Yeah, you know, this. well done. Well done. That's also about self-worth, giving yourself praise. Anything else? The last 30 seconds. Truly accept and see that everyone, uh, everyone is just what he or she is. Okay, absolutely. Why not? Let's be creative. Let's think outside of the box now. Very welcome, Michelle. On Monday, we're working on our imagination. We're working on our, um, let's see, what else are we working on? We're gonna be working on the iceberg of motivation. We're working on, perhaps if we have time, the six human needs coming from Maslow, Claire Graves, Tony Robbins. We're working on goal setting. And we're working uh, in a way to trigger the imagination to plant ideas, out, ideas that we are consciously thinking of in our subconscious mind. Yeah. All of this for Monday. Hopefully everything, plant trees as much as we can. Yeah. Okay. And we're working on, yeah, our narrative on Monday. 
Ladies and gentlemen, have a lovely weekend. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your participation. Thank you for, uh, for sharing this experience. Why not? Huh? Uh, all the best. Have a good weekend. Uh, enjoy the weather. And we see each other on Monday for those of us who will be here. And if not, see you down the road. Yeah. Okay. Take care. Thank you. Thank you very much.